Okay, so this is section 8.2, but it's like the second part of 8.2. First part was integrations by parts, but now this part we did the tabular method or tic-tac-toe as it's famously called in stand and deliver. And we did these two examples in class. So now I have some notes on example two. So this is like, sorry, examples three and four. So this is again, 8.2 integrations by parts, but the tic-tac-toe method. And we have two new examples um, that we haven't seen before. So for the first time, we have a definite integral. Now remember, we're going to use a tab tabular method or tic-tac-toe when we see a polynomial. So do you see how x squared minus 1? It doesn't just have to be an x squared. x squared minus 1, that's annoying. Sorry, the light's turned off. And it should, I don't know how to fix that. Okay, I hope this is okay for you guys to see. So ready? Let's do our, our u is going to be the polynomial. So our first u is going to be x squared minus 1, and we're going to differentiate down. So the derivative of this is 2x, and the derivative of that is 2 and 0. So you go until you get to 0. And then the signs for that go positive, negative, positive, negative, or whatever, 0, 0. Okay. And then the second part is our dv. So if the polynomial was u, then our dv is going to be e to the x dx. And we like that one because the antiderivative is e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, right? It's just the same thing. Okay, so this is going to equal, now let's do our tic-tac-toe. So if we picked u dv and then it goes so if this is our dv, then this is our original v. So uv comes first, so that's going to be positive x squared minus 1 times e to the x. And then this represents a whole nother integration by parts. So we did the whole thing, and now we have another u and v. So minus 2x e to the x. This is the third one, plus 2e to the x, and that is our answer to the integration. This integrates to get this, which means now that we have the antiderivative, we can plug in our upper and lower limits. So just like before, it's going to be top minus bottom. So we're going to plug in a 1 to all of these, and then we're going to subtract the 0 plugged into all of these. Now just be careful, when you plug in 0, it doesn't automatically go to 0 because e to the 0 is the number what? It's a number one. So I don't know if I can fit all this in one line. I think I will be able to. So let's see here. Well, one squared minus one is zero times e to the one minus two times one e to the one plus two e to the one. So those are our ones plugged in. Subtraction, because remember it's top minus bottom. This is from old school definite integration. Zero squared minus one and I need another parenthesis here, e to the 0, 2 times 0, that one will go away, plus 2 e to the 0. All right, can you guys see okay? Okay, slowly but surely, here we go, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I have 0 for the first term. We should have 6 terms, do you agree? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, separated by plus and minus signs. Here we have minus 2 times 1 minus 2e plus 2e. Okay, what do you notice? What do you notice here? Minus. Now we plugged in a 0 here, but we still have the negative 1. So we're going to have negative 1 and then e to the 0 is 1. So we have negative 1 and then this is all multiplied with a 0. So that's going to go to 0 plus now what's e to the 0? e to the 0 is the number 1, so that goes away. Okay, ready? e to the 0 equals 1, e to the 1 equals e. That's what we're doing here. Okay, what happens to the negative 2e plus 2e? Those cancel to 0, and then we have um, a negative and a negative. So we have 0 minus, 
Okay, what's negative 1 plus 2? Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So we have 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. Here's what I was about to do, my friends. Maybe you were thinking this. I was going to make this plus 1 plus 2 and get 3. Would that have been correct? No. So, because why? If you're going to distribute this to here, then we would have had to have also distribute it to here. So we have 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So that's the correct answer. Okay, so we did definite integration in a tabular method, and we may see it with integration by parts. You just do the whole integration by parts, and then at the end, when, when you were done, we would normally put plus C, but instead of putting plus C, we plug in the top and subtract the bottom plugged in. Okay, that's how you do definite integration. Okay, this is like my super favorite thing to teach because it's so hard and it's so fun, and I'm sad that I'm doing it on video and not live, but it's okay. Okay, this is not, do you see a polynomial here? Nope, we have an exponential and a trig. So this is uh, no tic-tac-toe. Where did tic-tac-toe come from? It came from that video. No tic-tac-toe, or um, does tic-tac-toe have an E? Okay, I think it does. So we're going back to just integration by parts, but something weird and funny, fun is gonna happen. Um, what should we let u equal? We're going to let u equal the trig function, the sine, and then du will be cosine, because we really like integrating e, right? I mean, we like taking derivative and integral, but the integral is very easy. It's just e. So this is going to start off like this. Now, take note that I'm going to rewrite the question this time, and maybe on a few other examples, I kind of, I just wrote equals. I just wrote Okay, the answer is, but take note that I'm I'm writing this down on purpose, okay? We're going to need that. U dV equals UV sun, UV rays, sine x times e to the x minus V du. Think, we already used U dV, U dV, UV, V du. That's kind of how it goes. U dV, U times V minus v du. So we have e to the x cosine x dx. Okay, the goal of integration by parts is to make it simpler. Is this any more simple than the original? No, it's pretty much the same, right? Except we have a cosine instead of a sine. It's not any more simpler. But we're going to do it again. We did practice that, right? We did integration by parts twice. So let's use integration by parts again on this piece. So I'm going to show my work up here, okay? So we're going to go integration by parts again. And let's use the same idea. So u will equal cosine and du, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine and dv will be the e to the x, which means v is e to the x. Okay, watch, it's gonna get fun. I'm gonna rewrite the question again. <clears throat> rewrite u times v. I'm just gonna move the e to the x in front where we're used to seeing it. Okay, minus. Now we're gonna do a whole nother integration by parts here on this piece, okay? So u times v is e to the x times cosine minus the integral of v times u. What's that gonna be? I have an e to the x and I have a negative sine. So are you okay with me putting this negative negative and making it a plus sign? e to the x sine. Okay, it was a minus sign, but this is a negative sign. We have e to the x times a negative sign supposed to go here, but it was a minus sign in front. So I took that negative sign from here and this minus sign and made it a plus sign. Okay, so you look at that and you go, well, Miss Keener, it's not any more, we could just keep going forever, right? And go forever and ever and ever, and it's really long. But, ready? This is super exciting. Okay, 
do you see how, how can I make it another color maybe? Pink. Do you see what we see here? The integral of e to the x times sine of dx. And do you see this over here? <gasps> what the? Isn't that exactly the same thing? And this minus sign, can we distribute this together? Can we distribute this? Ready? This minus sign is going to go to here. And then this minus sign is going to distribute into here. So this has like multiple personalities of positives and negatives. It has schizophrenia of signs. So it was negative, then negative, then positive. Now it's negative again. All right, watch. This is a minus integral of all this. Can't we add it to this? Watch. You're like, I am watching. It's a video. I'm going to add this whole thing. And so when I add it, it gets knocked off of that side, and I'm going to add it to this side because it's a like term. So if I have one integral of ex sine x dx, and I'm adding another integral of ex sine x dx, what's 1 plus 1? Oh my gosh. 2 times the integral of e to the x sine x dx. And then what's left over here? Let's see. e to the x sine x. Make sure I have this is minus e to the x cosine x. And this went away. This crossed off. Okay, what's the goal? The goal in your life right now is to find this. Well, here I have a 2 times this equals this. So what should I do with the 2? Or what can, what can you do? Yeah, we can divide both sides by 2, right? So we're going to divide this 2 so it divides out. And that divides out. And our final answer, are you ready? Germinal, please. Hey, do we have a common factor? If we have a common factor, we should factor it out. So common factor is e to the x. So I have e to the x over 2 times the sine x minus cosine x. And we need a plus c because it wasn't definite. It was indefinite. And where would that plus c have appeared? You know, here here, but we just kept integrating, right? And then we moved that integral to the other side. Is that beautiful? Is that fun? So non-terminating factors, what that meant is that it never would have gone away. It just would have gone in a cycle because sine becomes cosine, cosine becomes sine. So we took it and we added it to the side. Pretty neat, right? All right. So the homework is right here, 529. 43 through 57.